So everything is linked, folks. No major decision or policy stands alone in a vacuum. Every decision Joe Biden makes is linked in some way to the most important elements of our economy, to our daily lives, and to our survival. What we eat and drink, how we keep warm, Thanksgiving, Christmas, our livelihoods, all are in danger because of Joe and this. Some of you. Number one, no more subsidies for fossil fuel industry. No more drilling on federal lands. No more drilling, including offshore. No ability for the oil industry to continue to drill, period. Ends. Number one. Mm -mm -mm -mm. Joe Biden's war on American energy goes far deeper than the jobs he's destroyed, which is already a travesty. Right now, we're feeling just one of the many repercussions of one of the biggest mistakes of this presidency, and that's saying a lot. Biden's war on energy has cost us all and will continue to cost us everything. Ten issues, ten days. We're taking our viewers through the real issues being faced by real Americans. In the days leading up to our midterm election on November 8th and tonight, it's all about energy. While they're talking about Elon Musk on the left, Paul Pelosi, and gender pronouns, the very backbone of our country is being threatened. Our food supply, our entire supply chain, all are under threat. And they don't want to talk about it on the left. Diesel fuel, a diesel shortage warning. Now, what does that mean? Well, for one, it means that Joe Biden's inflation is about to go from bad to really, really, really bad and worse. And they don't want to talk about it over there. The coldest months lie ahead for Americans. The distillate inventories are at their lowest levels in nearly 15 years. Distillates, diesel, jet fuel, and oh, that's right, heating oil. It's about to get dire. And they don't want to talk about it. Diesel, which powers our trucks, trucks, the lifeblood of America, interrupted. Diesel, which powers our farming equipment, our tractors and other machinery. Diesel is running out, folks. Food supply chains are collapsing and they don't want to talk about it. We're just days from another manufactured crisis and the continued controlled demolition of our economy continues. So what's Joe's plan? What's Biden's plan to prevent the entire transportation sector from coming to a grinding halt? The big guy doesn't want to talk about it. What Joe does want to do is deflect to blame others for the outcome of his own decisions. Biden's outrage over earnings and profits for oil and gas companies earlier today was ironic, to say the very least. It's time for these companies to stop war profiteering meet their responsibilities to this country, and give the American people a break and still do very well. But this post-nap, quote, outrage is ironic because it's Joe and only Joe who's responsible for doing everything in his power to limit U.S. oil investment and is now absolutely livid that he achieved his lofty goal. This is his own idea. Now, Joe is angry that these oil companies are sending their profits back to shareholders instead of increasing their supply. But rather than increasing their investments in America or giving American consumers a break, their excess profits are going back to their shareholders and they're buying back their stocks so the executive pays are going to skyrocket. Give me a break. Enough is enough. Look, I'm a capitalist. You've heard me say this before. I have no problem with corporations turning a fair profit or getting a return on their investment in innovation. But this is remotely what's happening. Oil companies Record profits today are not because they're doing something new or innovative. Their profits are a windfall of war. I don't know why he's surprised this is lefty greenie Joe's own making. After all, the climate lobby, the greenies, and the policies they're forcing down our throats. That's the reason supply is down. No one else's. And if and when Democrats lose in next week's election, one reason will clearly be soaring energy prices. The lesson that an electoral defeat should drive home is that this is the result of their very own policies. Joe Biden refuses to understand just how damaging his war on U.S. energy has become to our economy. All of these things, they're linked. We told you right here on The Balance months ago, weeks ago. We haven't stopped telling you. These decisions, these policies have had far-reaching consequences for every single America. When Vladimir Putin crafted his plan for launching a war on Ukraine, he clearly knew that he had one important element in his corner, oil. He knew how dependent Europe is on Russian oil. But Putin also knew 
that green policies were forcing the West into bad decisions and that despite any sanctions or any losses, Russia's oil would remain as reliable, a reliable source of funding for his crazy war. It's not a moment for gunning for net zero and clean energy. Now is the time to make sure that Americans are taken care of first or taken care of it all, in fact. Joe Biden and John Kerry refuse to understand or acknowledge that this is exactly the time to put their green fantasies on hold. Put it aside, folks. Bring it back later. And yet Joe and the left care more about the, quote, climate crisis and getting rid of gas and oil. But that's meant higher prices for you and me. And Joe only wants to blame the companies he's trying to drive out of business. Joe Biden's angry and misguided answer today, let's tax energy companies, windfall profits tax to make the things even more expensive. What do you think? They're not going to raise their prices if you do that, Joe? Are you nuts? It's Joe Biden against America. It's Joe Biden against our economy. It's Joe Biden against our well-being. Just days ago, the Joe Biden, that Joe Biden thought he could spark energy investment by promising to buy oil at $72 a barrel to refill the Strategic Petroleum Reserve. And now he's proposing to unleash that windfall profits tax. That's inflationary. And more grave damage to our struggling economy. Is there anything at all this administration knows how to handle? Is there anything at all Joe Biden is good at? Is there anything at all he can offer a real solution for? Biden, Joe Obama, depleted our strategic petroleum reserves to their lowest level since it started in 1984. He bent the knee to the Saudis, begging them for help, hat in hand. They laughed at him. Now he's looking to make us even more dependent on foreign oil by taxing our energy producers. Great idea, Joe. His war on energy gets only worse in the middle of an energy crisis he himself created. Think about that. He's intentionally making everything worse. Joe's punishing Americans. He's punishing our farmers, our truckers, the backbone of our economy. He's punishing our economy. Someone once said, it's the economy, stupid. Joe still doesn't get it. We're at a frightening, frightening point, folks. Perhaps the red wave will jolt him back into reality. Up next... Some of our truckers are here, and they are ticked off. All right, we'll bring back a couple of guys who have been on the show before, and we love having them on because, they're again, they're the heart, heartbeat, lifeblood of, of America. Our truckers, Niels Mortensen and Chris Sieber, both truck owners and operators at Trans United. Niels, to start with you, my friend, uh, your diesel fuel, amongst other costs that you have to go through, repairs, insurance, Regulations, a diesel fuels up 102 percent under Biden. What's your message to the president? My message to the president is this war he's talking about is actually a war on the middle class. Every policy he has, I, I don't think the guy could find his rear end with both hands. It's one attack on the working class after another. It trickles up. It trickles down. I know tons of truck drivers that have parked their trucks. Companies are going out of business every single day. If you haven't stocked up for winter, I would advise you to do it now. Yeah, and, and Chris, Middle America is, is biting the bullet with this high inflation cost. We're not getting pay raises. Chris, are you getting a 102% increase in, in your mileage payout? It seems how it costs you 102% more to fill up your tank? Absolutely not. In fact, in the line of work that we're in, um, it, it's almost an insult on the internet uh, when you're trying to book loads, what some of them want to pay because, you know, I think everybody's trying to save their money because they know it's coming. Um, it's just these people, they, they don't have a sense of reality. Of, uh, they sit on their ivory throne and we're down here in the trenches and we're watching people go broke. Um, we're watching companies, I watch companies come in and they're getting 50 gallons at a time, just enough fuel to get the load done. Yeah. And, uh, you know, uh, we always try to run above half, so you never know what's going to happen. <laughs> it, it costs a fortune. Yeah, so, 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 Niels, um, so our audience understands this. We're talking $5 and almost five fifty a gallon uh, for, for diesel now. If you were to fill up your tanks, how much money are you sticking in that tank each time you fill fully up? About eleven $1 hundred dollars, wow. two to three a week, wow. and that's money straight out of the net, straight off my family's table. 
you know, we've cut back. Uh, you know, tonight for Halloween, I'm probably going to give out IOUs till next year. <laughs> you know, <laughs> I'm laughing, but it's sad. It is sad. And Chris, I, I, I make this point to, to people need to understand how much commerce, how much goods, how much project product transports across the country on the, on the backs of, of you two right there, Niels and Christian, your trucks. You guys are lifeblood. You're keeping things moving. What happens if, if we do run out of diesel? What, what, what could you see foreseeably happen? Well, when, the, when all the riots and stuff were going on, you know, during the, the Trump deal, you know, they were mad because he was an officer and everything. That, that's not even going to be, that's going to be like lighting a match to a candle compared to the riots and stuff that we're going to have in about a week of no fuel. There'll be nothing on the shelf from coast to coast. There'll be nothing moving. I mean, we're talking a total shutdown. Um, people will be cold this winter. It, it Electricity and stuff will be so high that the, the normal person won't even be able to afford it. Yeah. it it's they don't have a clue. They, they, they're they pushing something. They're trying to push their agenda through on green energy that we're not ready for yet. I agree we need some of it, but we're not ready for it, and we need our fossil fuels. We need to turn back on the pipelines, turn the faucet back on, and be dependent again. Independent, yeah. Final thought, Niels. I got about 20 seconds. Bring it home, my friend. Eric, you know, if you want to see real trouble in the U.S., and I hate to say this, let a soccer mom have hungry kids and see what happens. Mm. And we just want to do our job. We want to buy fuel. We, You know, it's what we do. I've done it for 35 years, and I, it's an important job. And it, it's really sad that we may not be able to continue doing that because we'll be sitting on the side of the road somewhere. Unbelievable. What, what a great analogy. What a great, great way to, 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 to phrase it, Niels. Let a soccer mom get hungry kids and see how you want to see hell. hell watch, watch hell happen if that were the case. Niels Mortensen, Chris Siebert, thank you both for joining us. We'll bring you back again as this thing continues.